I'm Bertrand Picard, an explorer and clean technology pioneer. I've teamed up with science journalist Sam Pauli, and we're traveling over a thousand kilometers across Switzerland using only zero fossil fuels vehicles, discovering hydropower's role in building the carbon neutral future upon which we depend. Do you know what, Bertrand? I've noticed that everywhere we keep stopping on this journey, every view is beautiful. Behind the view, you have dams everywhere. In this valley, you have a dam. In this one also, next to it also, and full of potential also for new dams. Not just a beautiful view then, so much more. As we conclude our road trip around Switzerland, we'll be finding out how renewables working in harmony together are fundamental to the energy transition. We'll be checking out some electric vehicles and hearing more on the infrastructure that can support them. So Bertrand, we're going up in the cable car to the Limon pump storage plant. I'm really excited to see what we'll find up there. What are you expecting? Well, it's quite mysterious because we're in the middle of the mountains. We're getting into the clouds. What will be on the other side? It should be the highest dam in Europe. Wow, we didn't manage to plan the weather very well, did we? No, but if there was no bad weather and no rain, there would be no water in the accumulation lake and there would be no hydroelectricity. That's the definition of renewable energy, is that it's working with nature. We've come to the Lintol Valley in eastern Switzerland to the Limon pump storage plant, where water is pumped from the Limon Lake to the Moudsey Reservoir, located 630 meters higher up the mountain. At over one kilometer long, the Moudsey Dam is the longest in Switzerland, and because it's around 2,500 meters above sea level, it's the perfect location for a solar plant. It's really a very special place here. It is, indeed. So actually, it's, it's a whole system here. For us, it's also a symbol for the future of the electricity system in Switzerland, which will be heavily based on hydro energy and solar. And here we have both in the same system. What do we need now in Switzerland to be completely independent with hydropower and sun? We're well positioned to go to 100% renewables because we have this backbone of hydro energy where we can store the energy. And this is a, a perfect match with something like solar energy. And this energy transition can go hand in hand with the transition to zero fossil fuel vehicles. For businesses and the public to switch to e-mobility, it needs to be efficient both economically and logistically. But is it, and can it be, what needs to work better to change people's mindsets and encourage them to adopt it? I've come to meet Ricardo Colucci to find out more about the growing network of electric vehicle charging points. Our involving is to enable businesses to have charging station. Everybody wants to putting out for the people, for the, the public, right? The businesses are getting their charging stations, but it's also improving and growing the infrastructure that's available for people who've got e-vehicles. Right, a win-win for everybody, right? So are you feeling excited about the future of the electric vehicles that are becoming available? Yes, the electric vehicles are improving. Like, we're sitting here in the van. We have bikes, we have cars, we have big trucks, we have motorcycles, fully electric. I think the future is electric. And it's not only Switzerland that is switching so successfully to electric vehicles. In Costa Rica, where more than 99% of electricity comes from renewables, there's also a push to transition to electric vehicles. I can tell you that it's been amazing. We have provided the conditions in terms of uh, legal and also infrastructure conditions for it to happen. I know that you're really optimistic about the possibility to, to reaching net zero? Well, I believe that if a small country as Costa Rica, let's go further, not even as a small country, a developing country that has socioeconomical challenges can do it, I believe the bigger economies, they can find a way and make it a fair transition. There is a sense of urgency that needs to be transmitted to, to all the leadership in the world. And I'm hopeful that we, we can do it because if not, we have failed as humanity. And that is not a choice. <laughs> so have you had a good time then, Bertrand, on our road trip? I enjoyed it. 
And you know, not only it was interesting because of the type of technologies we've seen, but the landscape between the first dam and the last dam when we were driving was absolutely beautiful. It's been great to go and find out more, talk to so many interesting, knowledgeable people, but not just passionate interesting, knowledgeable, people passionate also. people, but people that are really making a difference as yeah. well, who are really committed. If there is anything this journey has shown us, it's that we can and must reach net zero by 2050. But we won't without commitment. And that's not just global leaders and policymakers, it's all of us. True change will only come when the global population demands it of their leaders. The solutions are here and we need to use them. The race is on.